Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. In this video, we are going to discuss about the slab reinforcement details and why do we provide crank bars in slab reinforcement details. Many of us have the confusion, why do we need to crank the bar in slab reinforcement and how we can arrange the reinforcement, what are all the reasons to provide this kind of crank bar in slabs. So let's discuss all these things in detail in this video. So without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's start with the behavior of slabs. We have one way slab and two way slab. So when the load is applied on the one way slab, the slab bent like this. The load distribution happens like this. so the shorter span is the bending direction in one way slab. It bends in the shorter direction. And then the load is divided into half and it transferred to the beams. Yes, you can see here when the load is applied on this slab, half of the load will transfer to this beam and half of the load will go to this beam. One way slab and two way slab can be identified by using the LY by LX ratio. If the ratio is less than two, we can call that as a two way slab. If it is more than two, we can call it as a one way slab. So here, as you can see, the load is applied on the slab. Since it is a one way slab, it bends in this direction shorter direction so main reinforcement has to be provided in this direction in order to resist this bending moment next in two-way slab the condition is different so when the load is applied on the slab the two-way slab load transfer mechanism is entirely different from the one-way slab so when the load is applied on the two-way slab the load transfers like this so the load path divides into trapezoidal area and triangular area in two-way slab the load will transfer to all the supporting beams the load of this triangular area will go to this beam similarly the load of this trapezoidal area will go to this beam. so the load transfer happens in all the supporting beams and when the load is applied on the two-way slab it bent like this it bends in the shorter direction as well as in in the longer direction so first you have to understand clearly how the load transfer in one way slab and two way slab and how the slab behaves under loads so this is the behavior of one way slab and this is the behavior of two way slab under loads so when the lo load is applied on the one way slab it bends in the shorter direction when the load is applied on the two way slab it bends in shorter direction as well as in the longer direction so the main reinforcement here in this video we are going to concentrate mainly about the reinforcement in one way slab we need to provide the reinforcement main reinforcement in the shorter direction whereas in the two way slab we need to provide the main reinforcement in shorter direction as well as in the longer direction so along with this main reinforcement we need to provide the distributors as well in order to avoid the temperature and shrink heat stresses now we have a clear idea about how the reinforcement needs to be provided in one way slab as well as in two way slab here let's take this two way slab look into the reinforcement arrangement so the main reinforcement is provided in shorter direction as well as in the longer direction in both ways we have provided the main reinforcement and here the crank bar is provided and if you look into the reinforcement arrangement here alternate bars are cranked the reinforcement detail is given here so now the question is why do we need to provide this crank bar what is the reason behind it when the load is applied on the slab what happens the slab behave like this the bending moment you will be getting like this when the load is applied on the slab here there is a negative bending moment and here we have the positive bending moment so top we have the negative bending moment and bottom we have the positive bending moment this is called sagging bending moment and this is called hogging bending moment so in order to resist this positive bending moment we need to provide the bottom reinforcement and in order to resist the negative bending moment we need to provide the top reinforcement in the slabs so these crank bars are provided to resist the negative bending moment we need reinforcement in bottom as well as top so the same bar can be used at bottom as well as in top and we provide alternate bars crank so that the same bar can be used as a bottom reinforcement as well as top reinforcement so this same bar can be used to resist positive bending moment as well as the negative bending moment so that is why we need to provide the crank bar in slabs and uh, apart from this by providing this crank bar this 
we can save more cast because we are using the same bar in order to resist the positive bending moment as well as the negative bending moment and it is very economical it helps to resist the brittle failure near the support when the beam and slab is joining near the support it it helps to reduce the brittle failure and this cracked bar are also helps to resist the shear force which is developed near the support so by using this single reinforcement single bar we can resist positive bending moment as well as negative bending moment these bars helps to resist the compressive stresses developed on the top of the slab so in slab top is compression bottom is tension so the same bar can be used to resist compressive stresses as well as tensile stresses at the bottom there will be a tensile stresses and the top there will be a compressive stresses by using this kind of crank bar we can resist both stresses in near the support this kind of crank can be provided alternate bars can be cranked see here if you look into this bar this bar is a straight bar and it is cranked near the support similarly this bar is a straight bar over here and it is cranked this side if you look into the other direction also the similar manner the crank has been provided so let's recall once again why do we need to provide this kind of crank bar in slab this kind of crank bar can be provided in order to resist the negative bending moment that is hogging moment also it helps to resist the shear force which is developed at the support the same bar can be used to resist hogging moment as well as sagging moment and also it help to reduce the compressive stresses and tensile stresses which is developed in the slab these cranked bars are economical when compared to the straight bars if we provide straight bar we need we require more steel when compared to these cranked bars so these are all the re reasons why do we need to provide these cranked bar these cranked bars can be provided at an angle of 30 degree to 45 degree i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome if you like the content hit the like button and also share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you. Thank you for watching.